afraid that only one of you, when you say, if all, you know, people say, if only one of them, I can say something, and only one life is changed. No, I want everybody's life to change. Okay, that's really important. And the reason why you're here is because God wants to speak to you today through the messages and through our, our giving also. So uh, uh, we'll pray for, I tell you what, we'll do things a little bit differently. We'll pray for the tithes and offerings, but there's a bucket today. You guys can drop that off today at the end of, end of the service. I think it's important that we go through the Word of God because some of us are uh, need to hear the Word of God because we're going through some things or God is preparing you to go through some things that you need Him to carry you, to partner with you. Amen to that? So that's really important that we do that. So after that, thank you, Connor. After service, you can just put it right, we'll just leave it right over there. So thank you. So let's pray for the message first, and that's really important. We pray for the tithes and offerings after it. Lord, just bless the tithes and offerings. And uh, as we give to you, we give it from all of our hearts. And bless your word, Lord. We just thank you for the word of God that will change us from inside out. We need you more than ever in our people. Lord, because time is getting near, and we are living in the end times as all of us should know that at any moment, at any time, you can return. So we prepare our hearts, Father. We prepare the depths of heart, not only to, to speak Christianese or do Christian things, but to be sons and daughters of the living God. So bless the word, Father, as I speak about the necessities of life. And the first principle we talk about is, is to build or to rebuild a solid foundation. To you be all of the glory. And everyone say amen. amen. This scripture is, uh, when Keith and I spoke about it uh, several years ago, he read, he read this, this scripture that changed his perspective. And we need to be reminded about all of this. Because I did a wedding just a couple of days ago. And uh, boy, this guy had, um, it was a referral from somebody who came to a church once and he went back to Austin, Texas, and they were talking stories with a friend there. And she, uh, he said, I'm going to Hawaii to get married. Do you know anybody? And she goes, do I know somebody? So they called me that night. We did a wedding. So that was really, really a God time. And they were in, uh, right across Kualoa Ranch. They wanted to go to one of those uh, Kualoa expeditions, you know, that to, to, and said they couldn't because there is a wait list of over four months. Four months? Are you crazy? Yeah. So they couldn't do it. But we had a wonderful time together. And just before I did the wedding, their, 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 uh, their home that they rented was right on the beach. Beautiful. Man, you look outside, it's just gorgeous. China Manhattan on this side. You can see all the way down from Kaneohe, all the way down to Rabbit Island. All the way down. And you go, wow. And just before that, we parked on the side of the road, and this guy came. He just... Through his net, he came back with this kind of polite, big fish. He goes, we said, hey, bro, me and catch it. He said, what, you like one, brother? I said, oh, I'm a cooler. <laughs> or else, whoa, yes, okay. But I saw that, and he said, and he said, we said, praise God. I said, hey, you're Christian. Oh, yeah, but uh, kind of backslide, bro. I said, well, everybody black, backsides a little bit, but just go back to God. And we had a time that we could speak to him and encourage him to go back to church. And he said, this got to be God, man, because, you know, I'm going through some stuff now, and, you know, I need God. God appointed that time so we could be speaking to one another, to encourage one another to go back to Jesus. And all of us need to do that. Okay? There are a lot of Christians who are absent. Let me repeat that. There are a lot of Christians who are absent. Sometimes they're here, but they're still absent in mind. They do the routines of coming to church, or some may... Um, reasons for not coming or whatever it is but God knows where they are so his words will always go up and it never comes back void to him so that's really important that we understand that so we encourage one another so that's really important we went to a, a conference by Ravi Zacharias yeah? that was nuts this guy is one of the most famous apologetics and he's just amazing and he takes all kinds of questions from atheists, from agnostics, from religious people, whatever, and he just very calmly and just gives reasons why we should believe in God. Amazing! He turned people around. Last year, Hawaii Prayer Breakfast had about 500 people to attend. All set officials with young and all that kind of stuff, right? This time, had almost 2,000 people show up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Crazy! And it was overflowing. 
And the question and answers, after that, there was an extension that over, they said we had 500 people. There were more than 500 people. They had to open up the back room, yeah? And I got tired standing around. And we were pretty early. <laughs> but it was just an anointed time of questions and answers, okay? Very, um, it wasn't really religious stuff. It was just asking questions and answering. He wasn't trying to sell anybody about the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. And this is not, this is not my heart. All I want to do is present it to you and you have to decide whether you will accept it or not. Whether you will do it or not is entirely up to you. Amen to that? So Father, we ask the Holy Spirit to convict our hearts, to tender hearts to receive your word, Father, and it'll take growth, it'll, it'll have deep roots in our heart and we'll have and the fruit that you want us to have in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. Yeah? I looked at it on different translations and I took a look at this and man, this made even more sense to me. It said, John 1, 5, 1 to 5 says, Before anything existed, there was Christ with God. He, was, he has always been alive and in himself God. He created everything. There is. Nothing existed that he didn't make. Scary ever. Yeah, Why do you read that? Keep it. Ooh, whoa. Hmm. Yeah, he made me. Uh, he never made a mistake. <laughs> right? Eternal life is in him, and his life gives light to all mankind. His life is a light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness cannot and never extinguishes it. God is God. That's the foundation. That is the very center of our Christianity. If you don't believe that, then you lost everything. In the beginning. When there was a beginning. Beginning is no beginning. And there's no end. Forever is forever. God always existed. Okay. The Holy Spirit always existed. Okay. The Son of God always existed. But in our finite mind, we cannot comprehend it because there's a beginning and end. Anybody? Anybody has a hard time? What is forever? Have you asked ask yourself that? What is forever? Forever. It is time without end. It's just like the universe. It's still growing. There's no end. There's no beginning. There's no big bang. There's no black hole. That's a theory of people. Right? People look, archaeologists look at things and they have this, you know, they, they surmise that this is 50 billion years old. Oh, really? That's my man's mind. Right? And God goes, oh, really? <laughs> So who can really figure out the mind of Christ? No one can. We can surmise, we can, we can analyze, we can summarize, but we don't actualize. We don't really don't know, do we? Okay, these are, okay, there are some important necessities. Okay? There are things that you've got to do before you do certain things. Right? When I take a look at that, um, before we constructed our extension to our home, small extension, right, 300 square feet, Right? We couldn't just, uh, like the Philippines, they just find some stuff and they start building. Okay? There's no blueprint, right? Whatever, right? Everything is temporary. And you look at all kapakahi, all kind of things, right? Whatever, blue tarp over here, Coca-Cola cans on that side. And, you know, my dad, being poor in the Philippines, he always called it the temporary. <laughs> Why? Because it was temporary. Totam roof, you know, it a, and it was a shack. It wasn't much of a building. It wasn't built to okay, uh, city code. It was just according to measure, measure. And we didn't have anything to measure. So we, how many of you measure by stand? <laughs> and an accurate. But anyway, okay, we didn't just buy things that we thought we needed then start building. Okay? Building structure demands that we take time to plan first. <coughs> you just build and just go for it, right? You have to, if you take a look at our, our building, we have to, first of all, um, we had to count the costs. Lynn and I took a look at our finances, and the, God says in uh, Luke 14, 28, but don't begin until you count the costs. For those who begin construction of a building without first getting estimates and then checking it to see if they have enough money to pay the bills. People get in debt because of that. I cannot afford it, but they still get in debt. And they have HELOCs, and they have this, and da-da-da. And what happens is that uh, um, you owe too much money, and you get so much stress. You can have a wonderful, nice building, but 
if you cannot pay for it, there's so much stress, anybody? Right? You go, oh my goodness, I can't really afford that. So what we needed to do, after we got all the money we have to, you know, we prayed about it first, and you know what? Um, we had to look for an architect. Okay, why? Because he was the one that would, whatever is on our mind, he put on paper. Okay? Then we talked to him back and forth, what we need here, what we need there, all the specifications, then put everything together and to make sure that it was up to, up to building codes. True? Right? So we looked at that and we found out after we built our extension in our townhouse complex that 90% of the other people who put extensions were not built to code. They were illegal. We're, we're the only legal guys over there. Wow. Right? Everything was grandfathered in. So we looked at that and said, well, after we hired an architect, then we had a contractor. Okay? After the contract, the contract had to get subcontractors. We need a roofer here. We, we need dry bulk, we need electrician, we need blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Endless. Anybody try to build something? Yikes. Right? Then you go over there, there has to be inspections. We need structural engineers on this side. We need electrical engineers. And we were going nuts. But we were willing to pay the price for everything. We didn't ask for any favors. We said, this is God's house. We prayed about it. Okay? We were willing to pay full price because it was God's house. Workmanship. And when we took a look at that, it says, wow. Okay? But you know what the cool thing was? We didn't ask for favor, but we had favor. Really cool, because my, my son and daughter now, they're famous with building, you know, Aloha Build on, on, on national television. So David was very busy, and he said, you know, Dad, I'll, I'll, we'll do most of the stuff, okay? So David, and who was that, David, and the con Heine Construction Company, all of us pitched in, right? We just, we just had a great time, because all of the build was, I mean, construction company, right? So I know where every nail is and all that. So we had a good time doing that. When we take a look at that, okay, um, everyone that, that we, that God brought in, okay, the architect worked with my son David in ministry when we were at New Hope. So it says, you know, Pastor, we'll take care of that for you. Wow. Then the, then the plumber came in he said, we'll take care of that for you. Electrician came in. You know how expensive that is. He said, God says to bless you guys. Mm -hmm. Electrical engineer came. Uh, excuse me, the construction engineer came. Okay, he looked at that. He goes, hey, Nando. <laughs> oh, I was a neighbor from Hawaii Kai. Okay, he came. we saved thousands of dollars because we said, this is God's house. We will not okay, take any shortcuts. Okay? We're not going to use inferior materials. Period. And I looked at that and says, isn't that good? When you do what God tells you to do, okay, God will bless you. So anytime when we build our lives like that, it's important that before we start any project, remember this, include God at the beginning and the middle at the end. Everything include God. And God will bless you. From the beginning to the end of the project. Okay, why? Because God and His Word is our strong foundation. If God doesn't bless it, I don't want it. You don't want to get ahead of God. We couldn't do it without His guidance and His blessings. Prayer was imperative. We have to start asking for His guidance, asking for His will and His ways. Why? Because it was God's house. Remember this, everything you own, everywhere you live, God's house. God is a permanent resident of our home. The Bible tells us that God will provide all of our needs according to riches and glory according to Christ Jesus. Okay? The Holy Spirit will be your architect. The Holy Spirit is your contractor, builder, and inspector. He will take a look. Why? He lives inside of us. Okay? We are God's temple. Okay? He will make sure that we're building according our lives according to compliance with God's blueprint according to his standards and it will help us make corrections if needed to assure that we're building our lives on solid foundations not shifting sense. Matthew 7 24 
and 27. Everyone should know this. Okay? All who listen to my instructions and follow them are wise. Like a man who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the, and the flood rises and storm, uh, the storm winds beat against his house, it will not collapse because it's built on solid foundation, on the rock. But those who hear my instructions and ignore them are foolish. Winds come, no solid foundation. Have you ever built a sand castle? at the beach, and the waves come, go, well, ah, man, all of your hard work is gone, okay? So well, let's talk about that. How do you build or rebuild a solid foundation? First step, include God in everything. Not some things, or when you feel like it, not only the big things, but every little bit. Every little bit of your life belongs to God. Why? God owns you. He made your temple, and He lives inside of you. Jesus Christ, number one, is your Savior. Thank you, Jesus. If you're not saved, you better get that resolved pretty quick. Okay? Number two, He's our Lord. In other words, He controls our life if you give the controls over to Him. He knows best. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He knows everything about everything. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows the words that come out of your mouth before He comes out. Isn't that cool when you understand that? But most of all, God wants to become our friend. It's a personal relationship, a friendship, a relationship with Him that is intimate. You've never, okay, you'll never be a really friend of God if you try to build a friendship only when you have time. If you have nothing better to do. Or in your spare time. Okay? We have to make knowing God there shall be no other God that's sent before me. He has to be number one in your life. Okay? Not your children, not your marriage, not your car, not your business. God first. Number one in the, in the first of ten commandments. There shall be no other business, no other persons, no other children no other, that's placed before me. God first. Okay? Some of us wrestle with that. I did for a long time. Okay? It's surrendering. Total surrender, not partial surrender. So that's really important. Paul says in Philippians 3, he says, Everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting them as garbage, so that I could gain Christ. That's really important. So you know what? Everything that I have is his anyway. Everything is going to burn. Everything is going to be gone because I came into the world with nothing. I live with nothing. My purpose is to love God. To serve Him while I'm here. And to help others do the same. In the end, all of your work is, is not for naught. God will bless you when you start doing that. <clears throat> so, the question is, are you doing it? I have to question myself. Even as a pastor, sometimes I get busy with busy church work that I forget to spend time with God. I spend more time with people trying to help them through their pain and suffering and to bless them than rather than sitting down and blessing God with my presence. Oh, dumb, yeah? Just because you're a pastor, you, know, you, 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 get, you can get stuck on stupid, too, you know? Okay? If you look in a, if you look in a if dictionary, stuck on stupid, you'll see my face going, uh. <laughs> Why? Do it over and over and over again, expecting different results. Remember this. Remember this. You, can, you are as close to God as you choose to be. The distance between you and God can be tight or far apart. God will love you the same. But the more you love Him, the more you know Him, the more you will obey Him, the, bless, the more blessed your life will be. You can't blame others. You can't blame your wife, your husband, your parents, your kids, your pastor. You can't blame your neighbor. Knowing and loving God and having a close relationship should be at the very core of every Christian. This is why you call Christians or Christ ones or Christ likeness. That's really important that we understand. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24 said, the wives, the wives should not boast on their wisdom, 
nor the strong, uh, the strong of their strength, or the rich of their wealth. If any wants to boast, they should boast that they know and understand me. Wouldn't it cool to know God and to understand Him? How do you how do you get to know people? Spend time with them. How do you understand them? Spend time with them. Okay. When I look at just like with Lillian, we're so close. I know I know her intimately and understand her ways. Sometimes I just take a look at her and understand. Hmm. She doesn't have to say anything. Well, I don't have any saying well. Hmm. Why? Intimacy. Why? It's because this is what life is all about, right? To know God and understand His ways is, is, is the most important thing that we can do. Why? God wants to bless you. God wants to be an intricate portion of your life. That's why Almighty God, the creator of everything in the universe, loves and wants to have a relationship with you. Figure that out. Some of us don't want a relationship with ourselves. But God says, I look beyond that. I want to spend time with Ted. I want to spend time with Sharon. Why? Because I love them. Okay? How many of you really love your children so much that you just want to, you cannot get close enough to them? Yeah? You look at them, Okay. Our dog Coco just passed away after, after 17 years. It was so hurtful. At the very end, we know she was going to see Jesus pretty soon. And she was struggling. Um, she always howled because she's so close to Lilia, her friend, and, and Kyle. And if, um, if they're not around, she just howls. Ooh. Late at night. Ooh. And we slept down with her because we didn't want her to die without being close to the family. Anybody can relate to that? Animals have some you know, dear to hearts like that, right? And uh, after, after, you know, they took care of her, they gave her some vitamins, they gave her you know, what, what to prolong her life. And at the end, she couldn't eat, and we knew she was going to go in. Um, even, though, even though we know that uh, Coco was like, after 17 years though, okay? The last few, few, few days, Coco always sat at the doorway. No matter how sick she was, how bad, she was at the doorway. And when Lilia came home, she just wagged her tail and followed all the place. And after that, she lost her weight. She got blind. Uh, she got caught in the corner and went to pick her up. And Kyle used to grab her and, and you know, try to clear her, her. Her teeth was you know, deteriorating and her eyes couldn't see anymore. And Kyle took care of her and just caressed her. And this is how God does. He said, you know what? I want to love on you like that. Have you noticed that animals don't judge you? They just love on you, right? That's really important that we understand that. Psalms 24, 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. What does that mean? Make time to be with God regularly. Build a close, committed relationship with Him. Okay? Start to miss God if He's not around. Miss your time with God. Some of us don't miss our time anymore. How many of you had a family member that passed away and you just missed them? So every time you think about them, you just teary-eyed sometimes, yeah? Like my mom and dad. So make time, okay, to have regular, close relation, a conversation with God. To know Him is to love Him. To love Him is to understand Him. Friendship is God like anything else. Give your best time to Him, not your leftover time. A lot of people said, oh, I'm, too, I'm too tired to spend time with God. Oh, really? The God of the universe looks at Brian and says, Come on, brother, we're going to talk star, man. I want to bless you. I want, I want to speak to you. Oh, God. Should we wait there? Try we? Okay. I did that before, too, because I'm, I was busy doing church things. How dumb is that, right? God wants to spend time with you. If you only come on Sunday, it's not enough. <clears throat> it's just like eating one, one day a week. <laughs> You'll starve to that. Okay? Get a little bit poo-poos with God once in a while. Five minute breaks. Sit down in your busy day and take your five minute Sabbaths. Okay? Just pull the plug and go, oh, Lord. Or pick up the Bible and read a couple verses. Man, I tell you what, you'll be refreshed and renewed. 
But more importantly, build this unshakable relationship with God. It's really important that you do that. To know Him is to love Him. John 15, 13 says, There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend. In other words, make time for God. Build this friendship with Him. Husbands and wives, you should be each other's best friend. Every time I do a wedding, I, I do that all the time. Every time. I said, if you want a, if you want a marriage that will last a lifetime and more, okay, you be each other's best friend. Most marriages fall out of friendship before they fall out of love. Crazy, huh? Number two, stop negative thoughts. Stinking thinking never works. Fear is the cause of many problems. Can't hear any man. Fear of not lacking. Fear of not being like. Fear of this. Fear of that. Fear of this. Okay, people are fearful in a world where it appears that nothing is reliable. Everything shaky, right? Okay, truth has become relative, not absolute anymore. News has become more opinion-based rather than truth. Our nation's leaders, oh, I once uh, was watching uh, one of our congresswomen. Ay, 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 ay. Where has she gone? Rather than serving the needs of others, serving the needs of the people that elected them into office, they've abused that authority for personal political gain. What in the world happened? Think about it. We must take the time to do our personal investigations. We have to verify before we trust because if we've been persuaded by our emotions or somebody's opinions, then we will be in trouble. When I look at the, you know, I look at sometimes Facebook, oh, Hawaiian Airlines is giving two free tickets because they're, they're celebrating their 90th birthday. Oh, really? Check it out. This is, this is a lot of scams going on. Okay, Southwest Airlines is giving four tickets. Oh, free. You don't have to do that. Once you see the word free, uh-oh, check on it. Okay? It's important that you verify before you trust. Nothing is free. There is an angle. Okay? Publishers Clearinghouse. Oh, $25,000 a week you can win. That's a scam. But well, you got to buy. How many magazines do you have to buy? 25000 <laughs> <laughs> There is always a catch somebody. If it's good, too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Check first. Okay? There's a choice between faith and fear in our minds. Again, faith is what God says. Fear is having faith in what Satan is trying to convince you of. So you have to verify Romans 12 too. Always, it's, it's a, one of the scriptures that we have to start to remember. Do not conform yourself to the standards of this world. But let, God's, but let God transform you inwardly by complete, by complete changing your minds or your thoughts. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and pleasing to Him and perfect. Conform. Okay? What does conform mean? To obey, to agree, or to be influenced by pressures of this world outside. Okay? What is the world? Okay? You should eat this. You should go here. You should believe this. Da 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 da. Girls' values. Buy more. Okay. Do more. Smell better. Okay. You're gonna buy this. No, I saw this. Okay. Grow hair. You saw the one, right? Then you have to put this helmet on your head, and it grows hair. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. Look like solar energy on your head. Guaranteed. You can buy this after six months. If it doesn't grow hair, you get your money back. Uh, how about putting this potion on your eyes and all of these bags go away? Huh? Me, man. Okay. And people buy those things. Why don't you start aging gracefully? Look at me, kid. We handsome. Yeah, kid. Look, look. Yeah? Look at it. Oh, handsome. Look at it. Yeah. Look at our hair. Nice and look. Remember this, you're defined by what God says about you, not what the outside world says. Amen? Transform, Transform is to change from inside out by God's Word. 
All good and lasting things start from your heart, then it works its way out. Let your light so shine that by your good deeds it glorifies our Heavenly Father. Why? Because you have made an inward commitment to live as God has designed you to be. Proverbs 4, 20, 20, 23 says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen to my words. Listen to my words. Never let it get away from you. Remember them and keep them in your heart. <laughs> they will give life and health to anyone who understands them. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Okay, how many of you think that you're good? Uh, not that good. No, God sees you as a 10. If you don't see yourself as a 10, you're telling God he's a liar. All right? Okay? That's really important to understand it. Be defined by what God is saying to you. You are special. You are his workmanship. He died for you so you can have everything that he promised and a promise of heaven. Okay? Now, we have the option to ignore those thoughts of negativism or to nurture them. Wherever your mind goes, your body follows. If you think you're good, you're good. If you think you're bad, you're bad. You are a sum of what you think. So what are you thinking today? When this takes place, when you start thinking God's thoughts, you live in more peace. Anybody need more peace in your life? You live in joy. How many of you want to be more happy and joyful in your life? Okay? And you have assurance. You are convinced that God is for you and no one can be against you. Why? Because you have that experience. And number three, you have the right reasons or intentions. In order for us not to go weary and discouraged, we must have the right intentions in mind. Not to manipulate people. Not to step over people. Not to get the attention. God is asking us, do everything that we do in excellence, whatever you're doing, whether you're working for the airlines or you have your own business, whether you're retired, okay, whatever that you're doing, do it with an excellent heart. So people will take a look at you and say, you know what, something different about this. You don't cheat anymore, you do your best work, okay? You're always edifying, and you're drawing people to Christ. It's not about me, it's about Jesus. Let your light so shine, okay? Your attitude, the way that you speak, the way that you act, the way that you treat people, the way that you speak to your husband, to your wife, to your grandchildren, let it be edifying, that lifts, and people will take a look at it and say, wow! They say, you know what? Praise God. In the Philippines, they said, okay, to God be all the glory. We hear this all today. I had to learn about that in the Philippines. Okay? Kids living in poverty don't know that they're impoverished until somebody tells them they're poor. Isn't that crazy? We go over there, instead of ministering to them the way that they need to, we try to put 